Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where every day I talk to the leaders right here from the UK, where things are beginning to open back up. But I've got to admit, I can't wait to start traveling again and meeting my guests in person. And Austin, Texas is rapidly rising to my number one spot of destinations I'd love to visit. And I find myself asking every guest that comes from that area, where is the best barbecue? Where's the best bourbon? I've heard everything from Franklin's, Rudy's. But today, a guest gave me a heads up to check out Salt Lake. So I need to up my game in the cosmic ordering and start manifesting this trip so I can make it happen. But of course, outside of the pandemic, the big focus at the moment is actually on sustainability, clean energy and decarbonisation and focusing on the impacts that our actions can have on the world. But in the corporate world, every organisation is beginning to come under the microscope for their carbon footprint. But how can businesses manage this new energy transition? Well, today's guest is Craig Lawrence, co-founder of Energy Transition Ventures. And that's going to focus on investing in renewable energy while also focusing on network, computing and intelligence technologies that are impacting and enabling the energy sector as it works towards decarbonisation. And we're going to be talking to an incredibly cool guy. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Austin, Texas, where Craig is waiting to speak with us right now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So hey, Neil, great great to be on your show. Uh, and uh, my name is Craig Lawrence. I'm the co-founder and partner at Energy Transition Ventures. And uh, Energy Transition Ventures, we are an early stage venture capital firm. Uh, we're based here in Texas, which we like to call the, the energy capital of the world. Uh, and we're focused on finding and investing in startups that are uh, driving or benefiting from our transition off of fossil fuel energy sources to a host of cleaner, more sustainable sources. And we're a new fund. Uh, we launched the fund in February this year, um, a $75 million early stage fund. But I have in my career been focused on what we call energy transition for the last 15 years or so, both as an investor and, and operating roles in startups. And I'm glad you mentioned your career there, because here in 2021, energy transition, sustainability, are huge, huge topics. But 15 years ago, probably not so, uh, so much there. And you've pre- previously held venture capital roles and senior executive positions at leading companies driving that energy transition. But I've got to ask, where did your passion for technology and the energy sector come from? I mean, can you remember what put you on the path you're on today? I, I can actually really clearly it is one of those light bulb uh, yeah. moments um, in the in the first part of my career I was a, a practicing engineer mechanical engineering loved engineering loved everything about it I, I thought I was pretty good at it and I was working at a company called IDEO in uh, Palo Alto California right in the heart of Silicon Valley and some of your listeners will probably know who the, who IDEO is others won't and for those who don't IDEO is sort of one of the most famous and influential Silicon Valley companies that you've never heard of. So they're not a tech company, but a a design company that helps companies develop uh, products. And we did work for Apple, Microsoft, Cisco, you know, Hewlett Packard, Procter and Gamble, you know, uh, some of the the major tech and non-tech companies in the world. And we were, uh, IDEO was at the forefront of a number of design trends now widely kind of talked about in the tech industry, human-centered design, user experience design, design thinking, a lot of that came out of IDEO. So I was designing products across a range of industries, consumer electronics, medical devices, toys, furniture. And um, the the moment that, that I was referring to is uh, one day the CEO of a solar company came in to talk to us about a project he wanted us to work on. And despite uh, you know, many years of engineering. Um, I really didn't know what a solar panel was. And I think in 2005, not many people did. It was kind of this thing that, you know, 
most people couldn't point to one. Um, and when I learned more about the technology, talking to the CEO, how it worked, what it could do, I mean, I was hooked. It was literally magic, a piece of glass, a glass panel that could convert sunlight into electricity. And I was like, you know, I was just, I was in awe. I had been somewhat, again, floating as an engineer before that. Didn't really have a passion for any particular industry, just liked engineering. But after that, I was kind of hooked. Uh, it was the ultimate embodiment of the kind of technology um, that I wanted to work on, really cool and also beneficial for society. Um, so that that project, by the way, which was for a company called First Solar, First Solar has gone on to be one of the largest solar panel manufacturers in the world. It was a game changer. I mean, it's just kind of set me off on this new career path. And my next stop was at Excel Partners. Uh, the venture capital firm was right down the street from IDO, right in Palo Alto, to help them do what was a new thing for them and for the industry called clean tech investing. And that sort of kicked me off down the path um, that led me to this fund that we started. Love that. And here in 2021, we will have people listening all over the world that could be hearing about you for the very first time. So can you just tell the listeners a little bit more about Energy Transition Ventures or ETV for sure, and the problems that you set out to solve with this? Yes, uh, I, I love talking about this. So our um, our investment thesis, uh, and again, I would expect your listeners not to have heard of us mm. uh, as we are brand new and small. Um but but powerful. Uh, our investment thesis is simple. We you know we believe we are at the beginning of a fundamental and massive shift in how the world generates, distributes, and consumes energy. And you know society has gone through these shifts in the past, from you know burning wood to burning whale oil to burning coal to burning gas, from making your own energy you know in a stove to getting it from faraway locations through, you know, complex distribution systems like the electric grid. Um, so, you know, the society has seen these upheavals and disruptions in, in energy, and, and we've always generally benefited from it. Um, the, the fundamental economics of some of the new technologies that, you know, ETV is investing in and are growing like solar and wind and battery storage are really driving this shift. And they've really dri driven every shift before them. It's always cheaper, better. Um, and solar and wind are now cheaper and better than fossil fuels, full stop. Uh, and I think a lot of your listeners probably either won't know that or won't believe it because it's a relatively new phenomena in the past several years, um, but it's happening. And, and like, you know, uh, the other kind of interesting thing is like every other aspect of technology, and our lives, we're moving to a more digital and more distributed economy in, in everything we do. And that includes energy with consumers having sort of more choice, more power over where they get their energy, how they use it. Um, and then, you know, so that, that's what we're excited about. That's the sort of macro trend. And unlike past, there have been past investment booms. Again, when I was at Excel, there was a large boom in what was called clean tech. Um, this time is different. Last time, they did not have the economic tailwind. Solar and wind were the most expensive sources of electricity you could buy. Now they're the cheapest. They used to be called alternative energy because they were more expensive. And now it's really the default. Most new power generation built across the globe is renewable today. Um, and this is creating chaos. It's, it's literally highly disrupted trillions of dollars, major portions of GDP are going to move and shift. And the disruption and the volatility is what creates opportunities for, for people like me, uh, these investment opportunities and opportunities for startups to, to disrupt the space. And our job is to find and invest in those startups that are going to define and lead this new transition. And one of the reasons I invited you on the podcast today was after learning how you're exploring post-fossil fuel technologies and everything from electric vehicle charging to carbon capture and hydrogen fuel. So, so many cool things I mentioned there in one sentence, but can you expand on that for me? It is. And we, yeah, we are looking across, you know, it's fun. we're a sector specific fund. We're just yeah. focused on energy, which in many ways is, you know, pretty pretty specific but within that there's you know a wide swath i mean everything in our lives touches energy um you know, and uh so we're looking across a bunch of categories including what we call distributed energy renewables energy storage 
uh, mobility, which I think electric vehicles fall into, and then just kind of generally the electrification of everything. We're sort of moving to electricity, an electricity-based economy as part of this transition. And, um, you know, like EVs, uh, EV charging, e electric vehicles, batteries, it's really crosses a number of these themes. And I, you know, I, I like to, to, the example I kind of like to talk about, which is, you know, one that everybody knows, right, it's Tesla, right? This is one of the companies that emerged from the last wave of investment in clean energy. And, you know, they're a controversial company in many ways, but they are really an amazing company. And what they've demonstrated sort of single-handedly that it's possible for a consumer to completely bypass several enormous, huge, you know, world ruling industries, including the oil and gas industry, the automotive industry, the power and utility industry by generating their own electricity at home, storing it with Tesla batteries, right? And using that to charge their electric car uh, and all with products bought from a single company that is not Shell or British Petroleum or Chevron or Ford or your local utility company. All of those industries get bypassed. And yeah, it's a little expensive right now. Not everybody can do that, obviously. It's sort of, you know, it's the early adopter phase for this. For this. But we're talking that fundamental technologies we're talking about are silicon and lithium, right? Silicon for solar, lithium for batteries. These are the similar materials and technologies that are in your smartphone, Right. And so the cost and performance curves of those technologies are still moving really, really rapidly. And every year they get cheaper and better. So we love the EVs. We also love technologies that can help existing energy companies. Our investors in our fund are primarily, uh, you know, traditional energy companies that are looking to make this transition uh, and not be be lost in the transition. So things like carbon capture and storage and reuse of carbon are things we look at, you know, that can take carbon produced in power generation and do something useful with it, turn it into a usable product. And there's a lot of really cool companies working on that, essentially keeping it out of the atmosphere. Uh, and hydrogen is another interesting area you mentioned is it offers the potential to continue to use some of the existing infrastructure, burning hydrogen in, in natural gas power plants or using natural gas distribution lines um, to to uh, to transport and, and use green hydrogen. So those are those are a bunch of the interesting things we're we're looking at. And there is plenty of capital and plenty of really cool startups that are working in these areas. And I think it's something that every business leader, every business is now taking seriously. You did mention a few moments ago that it is quite early days. It is, but I think every government in the world is, is trying to encourage big businesses to take this route. And I had Epson on here recently who were talking about a very similar similar uh, topic there. And what excites me about what you guys are doing here is you're trying, helping usher in this new era. And I believe you're focusing on how networks, computing and intelligence technologies can actually enable the energy sector as it works towards decarbonization. But can you tell me more about the role of technology and everything that you're doing there? So, yeah, so the, the technologies that are enabling the broader tech industry, I mean, things like yeah. artificial intelligence, machine learning, Internet of Things, blockchain, 5G, robotics, you know, all these sort of hot topics that are uh, getting a lot of the attention in the tech in the tech world and the tech press, they I think they have a large role to play in the energy mm -hmm. transition. So we are looking for companies that can apply those technologies to improve, you know, how we make, how we move, and how we use energy. I think an important point is the energy industries generally lagged other industries in the adoption of technology, and it's it's for pretty good reason, right? Energy systems are generally sort of mission critical, right? They're, you know, the expectations of reliability are higher than those, you know, in a lot of other categories. You know, you may accept your phone rebooting or your computer glitching, but uh, we generally don't accept our power going out or our car not working, right? So the energy industry generally wants to wait until technologies are very mature uh, before, you know, they invest and they start to apply. So we don't necessarily look to the energy industry or the people in the industry industry to bring these bring us these new technologies. Um, you know, if we believe machine learning can help some aspect of the energy industry, we're likely to look outside the energy industry for the entrepreneurs and technologists and companies who are best at that 
um, perhaps developing it in other industries and who can, you know, help and we can help them bring that to the en energy industry. And, and an example, um, the first investment out of our fund is a company that that's built a software platform to help people use drones for inspecting assets, um, everything from buildings to power plants. Um, and they started out really in the building industry and with some really strong uh, technologists and software people and built some really powerful, build a really powerful platform to collect process drone data for that application for buildings. And we invested them because we saw the potential for their solutions in energy. They had already just started inspecting wind turbines and solar farms. And we see huge potential growth for them in that industry. And we can help them grow there. It's some, some value that we can add myself and my partners and our investors who are, you know, can, can help them get, you know, business in those areas. And I believe Energy Ventures is also backed by two operating companies. So can you expand on that? And, and also tell me a little bit more about the kind of value that they bring. The, uh, the anchor investor in our fund, um, we have a number of investors, uh, the, the sort of the, the initial investor who sort of got this off the ground was a company called the GS Group. And GS Group's a really an amazing company. It's a very large, diversified uh, conglomerate based in Korea. Um, they have business in oil and gas refining, uh, power generation, construction, uh, retail, you know, both brick and mortar, uh, convenience stores, and online digital uh, retail. And uh, last year, their former chairman stepped down and a new chairman came in right at the start of the pandemic. And he's committed to really making a number of changes to set the company up for future generations. So inclu including, you know, not just surviving this energy transition, but surviving. So in the middle of the pandemic, they set up a corporate venture group in Silicon Valley called GS Futures. Um, and and we were the first investment out of that fund, out of that corporate venture fund. And also their main energy company called GS Energy invested in our fund as well. So those two entities uh, as part of the GS group were the initial investors in our fund. And they're a great partner um, to the kind of companies that we invest in. They look like a great customer. So we've helped bring startups to Korea um, we've run a number of pilots on the GS Group's assets, whether it's a power plant or a, a wind farm um, or a refinery uh, to, to enable us to kind of help validate the technologies even before we invest. Um, and we really like having these corporate investors in our fund, particularly the traditional energy companies like the GS Group, both to help our startups um, and to provide sort of the technical expertise and know-how to help us evaluate investments. And it's why we really set up the fund in Texas because we wanted to access the talent and the capital that is has been applied to the traditional energy, energy industry. And we think that's really critical for this transition to leveraging it. And I'm, I'm curious, we, we mentioned it is early days and more and more businesses are beginning to wake up. But do you think that boardrooms across the world really are waking up to the huge shift in our immediate future towards decar decarbonisation and those big goals in 2030 and 2050 and the role that they will need to play? I'm curious what, what you're seeing from the conversations you're having. They're definitely waking up. Uh, we we named the firm Energy Transition Ventures specifically. You know, there there are folks. There are a number of sort of investment categories that uh, people talk about, particularly in venture capital. Um, there's climate tech, which is a relatively new term. Uh, there's clean tech, which is what kind of we used to call it t a decade ago. And we called our firm Energy Transition Ventures because that's what we hear. Uh, being discussed in the boardrooms. That's what corporates are really focused on in, in the energy industry. Yes, they're focused on climate. Um, yes, they're focused on clean, but really they are looking at this transition as a fundamental threat to their business. Uh, and so that's what they're, that's what the energy companies are talking about. And certainly corporations who are large users of energy are talking about it. And the, the companies aren't only feeling pressure from, you know, governments, which I think the pressure is ratcheting up from governments, but it's their customers and their investors, right, who are who are telling companies that they want to see action, they want to see something different. Um, and they're also starting to see 
the economic opportunity as a positive, right? So there's both sort of a carrot and a stick where it used to just be a stick. You know, governments would have to slap companies with fines or pass laws or regulations in order to get companies to act. And, um, you know, a lot of the energy companies are, are just paying lip service to decarbonization. Uh, they're, they're saying what they need to to get by in their boardroom and their investors. And I think secretly hoping that that, you know, they can keep going for another couple decades doing what they're doing and, and printing money off of fossil fuels. But many of them are actually really, really serious and taking this threat seriously, like, like the GS group. And many are succeeding. Uh, many have successfully made this transition. A lot of, you know, some of the European utilities um, in specifically. Um, and then I think, you know, a lot of the major industrial uh, and energy companies that we know of today that have been just stalwart large companies for centuries, I think they're going to disappear as we know them. And I think I think others will thrive. I think it's a, a really interesting time. And for those future companies that we expect to thrive and the startup founder that could be at the very beginning of their journey, is there anything they can be doing to to put themselves on your radar? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're open to, to all, to, to all inquiries. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we have, we announced the fund uh, in April, yeah. um, but we've been, you know, kind of actively looking at, at deals for, for about six months, looking at startups for investment opportunity. And when we announced it in April, we sort of opened up the, opened up the funnel, right? So our website is open. We read and respond to any, any inquiry through our website, uh, energytransitionventures.com. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter, probably uh, much more than I should be at C. Lawrence. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're, we want to hear from everybody. And ultimately, what is your grand vision for Energy Transition Ventures and the kind of legacy that you want to leave behind? So we're profit driven and yeah. we're purpose driven. So we and we believe we can succeed at both. And in fact, it's sort of it, 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 we believe that those work well together. My goal, really, uh, in over the next several years, is to meet every single important startup in the energy transition and invest in those category defining companies of this era. You know, every Tesla. Uh, in my last round at Excel, we invested in Sunrun, which became the largest uh, U.S. residential solar installer in the country, and O Power, which was a large software company, ultimately got bought by Oracle. I want to see every single one of those companies that's being started, and I want to I want to invest in those winners. So it's an odd, it's a it's a big goal for a small first time fund. If we can come even close to that, I think we'll be financially successful and we'll have made an impact you know, on the environment and on, on people's quality of life. And that's ultimately why I got into this. Um, it's why I loved, you know, my time in solar working in the industry, knowing that, you know, every solar panel that I helped get installed, you know, actually has an impact, help people save money, reduce uh, pollution, reduce carbon. Uh, it, it's, it's what gets me going in the morning. Love that. And we did mention a lot of the key technologies earlier in the podcast, but is there anything that particularly excites you about emerging technologies that will help you bring that vision to life? Uh, there's so much. Uh, yeah. There's so much technology to be excited about. Um, I think one area that I think is just like the perfect blend of tech and energy is uh, you know, in this sort of category we call distributed energy. It's sort of right now the way our electricity system works is as consumers, we're dumb. We're just on or off, right? Um, and the power utilities are a little bit smart. They kind of, you know, turn up and down power plants to kind of match what we use. I think we're, we're entered, we've already entered into a future where we as consumers and the devices we use that use electricity are becoming much smarter uh, and are able to, do things that help the grid, help us. And so this vision of a, a network of distributed, uh, what's called distributed energy resources, DER, smart loads, smart devices, smart uh, small generation units like solar panels that are being orchestrated via networking, intelligence, compute to sort of make a stronger, more resilient, healthier grid that's also cleaner. I think this is an area that's very exciting. We're just at the beginning of it. Um, 
it 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 involves technology, it involves policy, it involves um, you know large monopoly utility companies trying to you know trying to hold on to an old business model, and and small companies trying to disrupt them, and it's just it's really fun. Love that. And one of the questions I always like to finish a podcast on, yes, it's a tech podcast, but I always like to try and find out if there was a particular song or a piece of music that has inspired the guest in their past, helps them get in the zone before a big meeting or delivering a keynote, or just reminds you of your journey in technology and your career. Is there a particular song that stands out for you? Uh, that's funny. Uh, yeah. So I'm a, I'm a huge classic rock fan. I'm going to yeah. date myself here. So my taste runs from what I would say, like very high quality classic rocks, the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, um, to what some might call guilty pleasures, sort of a journey, REO Speedwagon, Sticks, those kind of, those kind of bands. Um, if I had to pick a song, uh, I, I'm going to stay kind of on on theme, um, and it is a song that that I do occasionally use to fire me up when I need to be fired up. I'm going to have to say ACDC, Back in Black, and um, I, I spent several years in my career in solar developing solar inverters. So a solar inverter is a is a device that converts the DC electricity that comes off a solar panel into the AC electricity that can be used on the grid or in our homes. Um, so, you know, DC, AC, AC, DC, these are terms that like literally were said a thousand times a day um, in many of my jobs. And so it's a pretty relevant band for my work and, and back in black, well, it's just that song rocks. So oh, really man. enjoy it. It really does a great choice there. And uh, don't beat yourself up on those uh, guilty pleasures. As a man of a certain age, I'm with you 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, uh, before I let you go, though, can you remind the listeners of where they can find you online and uh, contact your team if they've got any questions? Absolutely. So I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, as I said, I spend way too much time tweeting about energy on Twitter, uh, and I'm at C. Lawrence, I believe. Uh, our website, energytransitionventures.com, has a contact us. That email goes right to me. Uh, and I, I promise to read uh, every inbound request we get. And I respond, um, you know, even if it's a, a crazy perpetual motion machine, which we see very often, people claiming they can generate energy out of thin air. And, um, you know, I, I want to take a look. Uh, you know, you never know when the next crazy idea um, will be a reality. And like we said at the very beginning of the podcast, there's so many people talking about this from governments to businesses. Everyone's saying the right words, but you're putting what your money where your mouth is here and investing in renewable energy with that focus on network computing and intelligent technologies that are impacting and enabling the energy sector as it all works towards this decarbonisation, those big goals that everyone's working towards at the moment. So more than anything, that's a big thank you for sharing that story with me today. My pleasure. And Neil, it's great to talk to you. And I'm looking forward to, to hearing from your listeners after this. What a great guy. And I'm not just talking about his taste in music either. I mean, the fact that boardrooms across the world are waking up to the huge shift in our immediate future towards decarbonisation and the role that they will need to play is encouraging. But for me, it's people like Craig and the Grand Vision at Energy Transition Ventures and the legacy that they want to leave behind, and being a company of, yes, profit, but also purpose, and leveraging emerging technologies to make a real difference, that is the stuff that really excites me. So whether it's how your business can manage this energy transition, or if you are a startup founder wanting them to step up and help make a difference, I want to hear from you, and I'm sure Craig would like to hear from you too. But if you want to contact me, please share your ideas, thoughts, emails, whatever it might be, by contacting me at techblogwriter at outlook.com, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram at Neil C. Hughes, and my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. So I, I mean it, please keep those messages coming in. If you do connect with me on social media, send me a quick message as well, so I know that you're a listener to the podcast, and I'll return again tomorrow with another guest. So thanks for listening as always, and until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.